everyone. Welcome back to another round of Turin Mock Interview Series. I am Jose, tech lead at Turin, and I am from Montreal, Canada. And at Turin, I work hiring the best engineer by helping them with the vetting process. I have more than 17 years of experience, and my expertise lies in JavaScript. Today, I will be interviewing Akil for the role of an experienced Android developer. Okay, so let's hear from you, Akil. So could you please uh, introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about your professional experience? Uh, I am Akil from Pakistan and I'm having 10 year development experience with Android and iOS application. So I can develop Android applications in Java and Kotlin as well. And uh, my recent experience is related to banking applications like financial applications in which we can perform different types of banking transactions like fund transfer, top ops, and these type of things. So my most of work is related to banking and I also work in the social applications like uh, messaging apps in which we can perform group chat, single chats, and these type of things. And I also use different uh, architecture for developing Android application by using MVVM, MVC, MVP. And I, we are also using the clean architecture that is mm -hmm. most recent best practices used for development in Android and also in different programming plat uh, platforms. So that's introduction from my side. Nice, great. All right, that was great. So I see you have worked hard, right? So 10, 10 years, like it's a decade. So it's a quite a large experience, okay? Um, could you please tell me uh, a bit, uh, something about any uh, interesting project that you have been work on? Uh, actually, I am working in a branchless application in which we have different uh, interesting features like uh, we can uh, perform committee, like uh, if people want to uh, collect funds from different people and uh, uh, we need to collect uh, funds in a specific account and then after completing the month, we need to disperse these funds to a specific people by using a lottery. Uh, mechanism so this is most interesting uh, development experience from uh, for me because in which we have different type of challenges like we need to tackle different uh, banking challenges like we need to uh, study the core banking system how the fund transfers and how we need to uh, securely save the transaction in a specific uh, funds in a specific account so we can perform the transaction after the month so the whole process need to be automated so we have different types of challenges like uh, security threats uh, and these type of things so we perform different security protocols like end-to-end -end encryptions ssl pinnings and these type of things this is the most interesting part uh, that recently i developed great so uh talking about security okay um so what do you think is uh or are the best practice to avoid memory leaks on android uh, so we need to perform different types of best practices to perf uh, overcome the memory leakage in android so i will elaborate some points from the best practices like we need to use uh, uh, get application contacts where we need to get the contacts in the Android application instead of activity contacts. So it will be reduced memory leakage. So if we need to use activity contacts, so we need to destroy them on the activity destroy. So we need to handle the whole activity lifecycle very smartly. So we need to, the second point is we need to uh, avoid using static variables for declaring our views and activity contacts mm -hmm. so we can eliminate the memory leakage. The third one is uh, we need to use, uh, we did not uh, uh, need to use other classes references inside our activities. And the fourth one, we uh, if we use any broadcast receivers in our applications, uh, so we need to unregister them after uh, moving to the next screen like we need to unregister broadcast receivers on activity destroy so we can avoid the memory leakage and if we are using different types of background tasks like using async task so we need to destroy all these things on the 
activity destroyer like uh, we are using background threads so background threads um, uh, background threads are the uh, initiation for mm -hmm. uh, creating memory leakage in the android application so we need to avoid these type of things cool we are going to talk about the mode threading uh, background threads later on uh, but you mentioned broad uh, broadcast receiver right so uh, what's a broadcast receiver uh, actually, broadcast receiver is a Android component that uh, allow you to register in a Android OS for handling different types of events. Like uh, if uh, uh, any event happen in an Android OS side, so Android OS will notify to the applications. Like uh, uh, I can give a simple example. Like when we restart our phone the broadcast receiver is called like uh, action boot completed so when we restart the phone after restarting the phone and application if we register the uh, boot complete uh, uh, broadcast receiver in our application we will be notified by the android os so we can perform different actions according to our need so actually this is a broadcast receiver great 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 and um could you please tell me uh, what's the difference between um, classes, uh, files, and activity in Android? Okay, uh, the class is a compiled form of .java or .kt file. So we can use both uh, languages for developing Android application. So we write the code in Java or Kotlin file. So the compiled form of both is a class. The second one is file. The file is a block of arbitrary information or resources. Like we use different types of resources like images, audios, and this type of resources is referred as a file in Android application. The third one is uh, activity. Activity is uh, actually representing the user interface of our application. Like uh, if we are using different application like WhatsApp. In WhatsApp, when we open the app, we can see three tabs or different types of lists. So the single user interface in Android application is called activity. Great, great, great answer. Have you ever heard about, uh, let's see, AIDL? Uh, yes. I hear. Cool. So uh, what is AIDL and when should we use it? Okay, so first, uh, what is AIDL? Actually, AIDL is a Android interface definition language, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, we use it in multi-threaded environment. When we are developing applications in which we have different types of threads, like uh, uh, we are doing performing some tasks in a background, and we are updating UI. So this type, when we have this type of scenarios, then we use. AIDL. So actually in AIDL, uh, a method is written in a other application, but it is executed in different application and it uh, passed the result to the uh, back to the first application like uh, you are heard about the remote procedure calls. So in which uh, our methods are executed on the server side and result back to the client. So this is actually the same thing in the Android in which we can uh, uh, achieve RCP in Android locally. So it is AIDL. Cool, <laughs> really cool. And so what's the difference between uh, ANR and crashing in Android? Okay, uh, it is very interesting question. Uh, like uh, we have a lot of issue in related to ANR in like uh, when we upload our application on the Play Store, we can see the crash report. So we have different types of ANR and crash reports. So actually crash is related to the coding part. So when we receive any exception in a code, like we have some logical errors, then uh, the crash is happened and our application is terminated by self but an uh, anr is uh, related to user experience like uh, when user is using android application the ui is frozen and user is unable to do anything so he need to kill the application manually and restart it so that's it and that is anr cool yeah 
something like that for sure. Okay, before we move to our next question, okay, I would like to call upon our uh, developer fellow here. So if you have any different answer, okay, please let me know in the comment section below uh, for each question that I asked him, what would be your answer? Okay, and let's see if we are aligned on the answers. Okay, and if you are looking for Android positions, I would like to ask you to go ahead on turing.com slash jobs and search for Android position. You will find tons of Android position there. All you need to do is just apply for them. So uh, sign up at Turing if you are not signed up yet. You can uh, go to the vetting process and once you pass the vetting process, okay, I, I promise you, you will get a job. Uh, with Android. You work with Android 100% remotely as we did. Okay. Uh, okay. So if you enjoyed this video, please give us a big fat thumbs up and comment down below uh, what is your answer for each question. Okay. Let's go back to you, uh, Akil. So my next question for you will be, mm, let's see, what's the difference between uh, or, or the relationship, okay, between looper, handler, and message queue in Android? Okay, uh, actually message queue is a queue that has tasks called messages, which should be processed. Like uh, we, uh, perf uh, we queue different tasks in a message queue, mm -hmm. then we use handler, handler and in queue tasks in a message queue using looper and also execute them when the tasks come out of the message queue. Like uh, we have different tasks in a message queue, the handler will execute them when it get back from the message queue. And the looper is a worker that keeps the thread alive loop through the message queue and send message to the corresponding handler. So it's responsibility to uh, hand, uh, uh, send message to the uh, handler. All right, That's great. It. When would you call get application context? Uh, actually, we need to uh, call get application context when we want to return the context of entire application. Like we have uh, different screens like activities, and fragments and uh, these type of things so if we want to get the whole application context then we use the get application context instead of specific context like in a, a activity or fragment so we prefer the get activity context when we need the whole application context great and have you ever heard about android ndk that yes Yes. yes. And then I'll ask you, what, what is it? Okay, what is uh, Android NDK and when should we use it? Okay. Uh, and uh, I use Android NDK a lot of time. Actually, it is a companion tool in Android application in which we can use NDK to perform different performance related tasks. And like uh, when we want to secure our data, so we will prefer the native code. Like we write the code in C or C++ languages, and then this code will be communicated with the Java using GNI, Java native interface. So this code is more performance efficient and secure instead of Java code. So like uh, in Android application, if we want to use different keys, domain URLs and certificate keys, these type of things. So we will prefer to use NDK. So we write code in C, C++ and then use it in Android for securing uh, our application from reverse engineering. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. What database, okay, is using in Android and how it's different from client side um, management systems? Okay, uh, so in Android, we are actually using SQLite. It is a uh, light form of SQL database. So it is uh, entirely different from our traditional databases systems like SQL, etc. Uh, but in SQL uh, engine is a serverless engine, like uh, in SQL or Oracle type databases, we have a server and client, this type of environment. But in Android, the SQLite is actually perform all tasks locally. So it will perform all transactions inside the Android application and did not communicate with the server. So uh, 
And so we cannot use different types of latency issues. Like uh, in Android application, we have different types of performance issues. Like we have limited memory, limited storage instead of computers. So that's why SQLite is a light form of these and we cannot bear different type of latencies. So we uh, this is actually different from the uh, server uh, server side uh, databases. Like it is totally serverless database and perform all transaction locally in Android. Cool, great. All right, so uh, could you please explain me in detail about the important, uh, about the important files and folders using when you are creating a new Android application? Okay, uh, in Android, when we create an Android application uh, from start, uh, there are important folders like we have a Java folder, resource folder, and script folder. In a Java folder, we have different files like Java files and Kotlin files. We will write all business logic in Java or Kotlin, like for handling our application navigations and downloading data from internet. And this type of all stuff uh, will be written in a uh, Java files. And those files contain in a Java uh, directory so other than java is a resource directory that is very important in android application like we have different types of resources like images audios colors styles and this type of things like we define different types of dimensions and screen sizes for our application mm -hmm. and handling different themes so we will uh, write all these things in a uh, dot uh, xml style files like we also develop our interface in XML and those files are contained in resource directory. And other than that, we have different script uh, directories in which we have Gradle files in which we can define the minimum OS version, maximum OS version, our build version and code version. These things are used for Android application like uh, uh, code version is used for uh, Play Store Mm -hmm. Like when we update different uh, variants of our application, we prefer to use code variant for differentiating with different uh, applications. We also use application ID that is present in this directory that is uniquely identify our application on the Play Store. Great. So this is the overview of this. All right. Directory. So great. You did great today. Okay. That was my last question for you. Uh, now I have a question for our audience. Okay. So, uh, in the Android interview, you might get some of these questions. Okay, let me know in the comment section below uh, if you would answer different these questions. Okay, and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Uh, comment down below also if you want to see the code challenge, the code questions for an uh, Android developer. Okay, let me know in the comment and then you can have a follow up video and have one video dedicated to code questions. Okay, for Android or for any language. Just you just need to drop a, a message here and say I want to see the code question for Android, for React, for any any kind of uh, technology or library or framework. We are going to make this video for you. Okay. Uh, also, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, follow to on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Clubhouse. So we are all there. Okay. Uh, go on, go at Turing, uh, community.turing.com, subscribe to our events so you can watch events about Android, JavaScript, Python, um, English. So there's a lot of events happening there. So you can go there and, and, and watch them, attend them. So, uh, let me know what you would like to see in the, the upcoming videos. And so this was my last question. So thank you, Akil, for your great insights today. So your great answers. So um, that's a wrap. Okay, yes, that's a, that's a wrap. I hope to see you again. I hope to see you all again and see you all again. Thank you.